Hi everyone, this is Pierre from P2 Design. A few weeks ago, I showed you how to rig and animate cloth by hand. In this video, I will show you how to combine cloth simulation to your rig character. I will also show you how we can transfer those cloth simulation to a fully rigged cape, so that we get the same result using only an armature, without any add-on. This way, you can export those animations to a game engine, for example. While there are add-ons to add physics to bones, it becomes very complicated with large pieces of cloth. Let's see how I've done this. Before we dive into the actual animation, you need to know that the topology of your mesh is very important. The simulation will occur between the connected vertices of the mesh. So it's generally better to use only quads and evenly distributed vertices. To illustrate this, I will add a simple plane, go into edit mode and subdivide it several times by right clicking. This will automatically generate a nice and even topology that is perfect for a cloth simulation. For the sake of demonstration, I will go into the overlays and I will display the wireframe so that we can see the topology of our mesh even in object mode. There are different ways to add the cloth simulation. You can do it through the modifier stacks under physics, or we can head to physics in the properties editor and enable cloth. From there, as for any simulation in Blender, we need to play the animation to currently start the simulation. And if you follow on the steps so far, you should see your plane falling in the void of infinity. As any simulation in Blender, there are tons of options to be tweaked. Fortunately enough, when you click on the top right corner of the Close tab, you can find some presets. As we select one or the other, the properties value will change to fit the behavior of silk, leather, or whatever. For the time being, we will use the silk preset. Under the physical properties, we'll find the cache panel that is used to bake the simulation. Basically, Blender will pre-calculate the simulation and record it instead of calculating it real-time at the cost of performances. And under this, we have one of the most important tab, the Shape tab. And this is where we are going to be able to pin vertices. And for this, as you can see, Blender is asking for a vertex group. So let me switch to the Object Data panel, then I will enter Edit Mode and select one of the vertices in the corner. I will create a new vertex group and I will call it Pin. It doesn't matter the name you give it, and I will assign this vertex to the group. Now I can source this vertex group in the pin group, and if I play the animation to launch the simulation, you can see that my mesh seems to be pinned to this vertex. Basically, pinning a vertex or a group of vertex will remove them from the simulation, so they won't move anymore. But the vertices around will behave accordingly. So if I add another vertex to my pinning group, we will see that our cloth simulation will react differently. And as for any vertex group, I can use different influence factor for any of the vertices. This is something to keep in mind as we are going to combine our cloth simulation with an armature modifier. I take this opportunity to let you know that my friend Zach from CG Boost just released a new chapter for his course Cubic World. He's running a 20% discount that ends in few hours, so jump on it. Let's combine our simulation with a rig. I will first get rid of the pin group so that we can start fresh. Then in 3D view, I will press Shift A and add an armature. Single bone, I will enter edit mode. I will press G to move the bone and then I will hold Ctrl to be able to snap it to the top left corner vertex. I will press Shift D to duplicate this bone and snap it on the opposite corner. From there, I will rename the bones 1 and 2 and then I will get back into object mode. First, select my plane, then the armature press Ctrl P and use empty groups. Blender automatically creates two vertex groups with the same name as the bone, but the bones have no influence on the mesh yet. Let's fix this. I will first select the armature, then the object, press Ctrl Tab and switch to weight paint mode. I will simply give an influence or weight of one. For each of the vertices, the bones are overlapping. So each bone will only influence one vertex. If I now select the armature and go into pose mode, you can see that only one vertex is influenced per bone. Let's give a look to the modifier stack. For the time being, the armature modifier is beneath the clothes modifier and when I press play, our mesh falls down as when it wasn't pinned. So let's try moving the armature modifier on top of the cloth simulation. And we have the same result. 
The Close Simulation overrides the Armature modifier. To get rid of this issue, I simply need to pin those two vertices in the corner. So I will select them, I will create a new vertex group that I will call Pin, and I will assign those two vertices with a weight of 1. If I go back into Object Mode and I play the simulation, I get a proper behavior. And while I'm playing the animation, if I move the armature or one of the bone, it will influence the cloth simulation. I will now show you how I set up the cape on this animated character, taken from my animation course Alive. It's the best rated and most thoughtful animation course in Blender available to date. Check it out on p2design.com and p2designacademy.com. Also, if you're enjoying my content, that would be of great support if you could leave a nice comment and like this video. Here I'm back in Blender with my rigged character. The first important step is to switch your rig to rest pose. This way we can see our character when it's not deformed by the rig and we can build the cape upon this pose. So I will add a simple plane that I will name cape and then in edit mode, I will position it upon the shoulders of my character give it some kind of cape shape, very simplified, and then I'm going to subdivide it. You can use a more complex model, that's not a problem. As explained in the very beginning of this video, the most important thing is to keep a nice topology. From there, I will quickly reshape the contacting area and I will reposition it. From there, I can go to the physics tab and add a cloth simulation. And to keep it simple, I will use the silk preset. If I now play the animation, it will run the simulation and our piece of clothes will fall down. The next step is to select our character and enable collision under the physics tabs. This way, if we run the simulation, as soon as the piece of clothes is in contact with the character, there will be some kind of impact or collision. So when our character will be moving, his body will interact with the cloth simulation. The next step is to rig the cape to our character's shoulders. We need to make sure it's pinned and that it follows the deformation of the shoulders. There are different ways to skin the mesh to the armature, but I will try to keep it clean and simple. I first select the cape object, then the armature and press Ctrl P and choose with empty groups. If I now display my character's deformation bone, you can see that I just need the influence from the neck, the chest number 2 and both shoulders. The idea is to get rid of the unused vertex group on the cape. To do so, I will go in the vertex group channel. I will search for the shoulder deformation bones and I will lock those vertex group. I will do the same with the neck and chest bone. I can now open the drop down menu of the vertex group and delete all the unlocked vertex groups. I'm now left with the vertex group we are going to use. To be able to edit those groups, I need to unlock them. And from there, I will quickly assign only the vertices of the first row to the different groups. In the end, I didn't use the chest influence. I only used the neck and the shoulders. Make sure that you simply give an influence of one for each of the controllers. If your weight painting is not automatically mirroring, it's probably that your mesh is not perfectly symmetrical. From there, you should double check if your vertices are following the corresponding bone. Remember that you only need to weight paint the vertices that are going to be pinned, as the other vertices will be driven by the simulation. If I now play the animation, the cloth is still falling because we haven't pinned those vertices. So I will go back into edit mode on the mesh, select this row of vertices, create a new vertex group that I'm going to call pin, and I will assign all those vertices with an influence of 1. From now, I need to go back to the Cloth Simulation tab, go to the Shape menu, and under Pin Group, select the group I just created. If I now play the simulation, we can see that the cloth is still hanging on my character's shoulders. It has a bit of a weird shape, so there are two things we can do to fix this. First, I can edit the mesh to give it a proper shape closer to the rest pose of the simulation. From there, I can fine tweak the position of the vertices that are supposed to be in contact with the shoulder. And then in the physics tab, under collision, I can reduce the distance so that my clothes will stick closer to my character, which is our collider. Increasing the quality value will increase the number of times the simulation is recalculated for a better result. 
As usual, more calculation will increase the time needed to calculate the simulation. Once we are done with that, I will simply add a material to the cape so that it's red. Then don't forget to reorder your modifiers and put the armature modifier on top of the simulation. If you want a more realistic look, you can add a solidify modifier to the cloth. And if you want it to be smoother, don't hesitate to add a subdivision modifier. I won't be adding it because it will slow down my viewport. My character already has a whole cycle animation that I've made for the course alive. What I will do is manually duplicate all the keys to repeat the cycle several times. Once I'm done with that, one important thing is to set a rest pose at the beginning of the animation. The idea is to give the simulation a bit of time in the beginning to stabilize the cloth before our character starts moving. So I will select all my controllers and I will cancel any rotation, scale or translation and insert a keyframe and I will duplicate this pose over 20 or 30 frames. If I now play the animation, Blender will calculate the simulation in real time. This is the time where it can get a little buggy, don't worry about that. Just check it out and see if at some point the simulation stabilizes. From there what I can do is increase the quality steps so that Blender will make a more accurate calculation of our simulation and then bake the simulation. Don't forget to set your simulation start and end for the baking. It should start on the very first frame or on the frame where you have the rest pose and then set the end when you want to stop your animation. Getting good results with simulation is about trial and error and this is why I don't like simulation at all. You have to tweak values, then bake, then see if it works and then you have to retweak the values and rebake, etc. and I feel like I'm wasting my time. But let's be honest, once you're a bit comfortable with it, you can save a lot of time, especially if you are looking for realistic results. So I don't like to use simulation, but I'm not saying that they are not good. What I can advise you is to proportionally increase the values of the stiffness and also enable self-collision. Test different values and bake your simulation again and again until you get the result you want. For the sake of presentation, I will show you the mechanism on a simplified version of our cape. I have three objects in my scene, two identical meshes and one rig. The blue mesh is the one with the cloth simulation and it's only attached to the root bone. If I hit the spacebar, you can see the simulation starting. The red mesh has the same geometry but it's all rigged. From there, I will quickly create an animation by only moving the root bone pretending it's the shoulder bone for our cape rig. Once I'm done with this, I will use the silk preset for the cloth simulation. I will increase the simulation quality and then I will bake the simulation from frame 0 to frame 150 to fit my current animation. I can now hit the spacebar to play the animation and double check that my simulation runs well. To transfer the simulation to the rig, we will need empties. The empties will follow the simulation and the rig will follow the empties. I will use arrows empties, you can use any kind of empty, it doesn't matter, this is just the way they are displayed. I need my empties to be perfectly aligned with the boats. So I will simply add a copy transform constraint to the empty and I will source the first bone. Then I will duplicate this empty and source the second bone, duplicate it again and source the third bone. Once I'm done with this, I want to apply the visual transform of those empties by pressing Ctrl A and choose visual transform. This way I can remove the copy transform constraint and the empties will stay in place aligned with the bones. Now I can get rid of the constraint on all the empties. Now I need those empties to currently follow the mesh that has the simulation. And it's actually pretty simple as we can parent the empty to the vertices. First select the empty, then the mesh with the simulation and enter edit mode and select three vertices and press Ctrl P. Then repeat the process for the other empties. You can select them through the outliner. This way no need to enter and exit edit mode. The benefit of parenting an object to three vertices is that the object will follow the vertices but also will be oriented as the face drawn by those three vertices. It's more obvious if I enter edit mode on the mesh and move one of the vertex, you can see 
DMT following the orientation of the triangle. So now we can easily constraint our bone using those empties and a copy transform constraint. I will display my rig, enter a pose mode, select the first bone, go into the bone constraint and add a copy transform and source the first empty. And I will repeat the process for each of the bones. And now if I play the animation, we can see our rigged mesh following the simulation. You might see slight difference between the animation driven by the bones and the one driven by the simulation. To get a perfectly accurate transfer, you will need to create a bone per vertex. This is absolutely doable, but that will take a lot of time. So I applied the same principle to my character scape. Here you can see the simulation and all the empties parented to it. Now here are the bones constrained by the empties. And here you can see the rigged cape without any simulation. So it means that this animation can be exported as an FBX to a game engine, for example. This is a pretty tedious process, but I'm sure it's not that complicated to get it scripted. So if you know how to script, don't hesitate to try. This is the end of this video. Hope you enjoyed it and I will see you very soon. Bye.